Hey everyone, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Today we're going to take a look at Something by the Beatles. Now in this first lesson we're going to take a look at all the chord progressions and the little fills, guitar fills that go along with them. And in the next one we're going to take a look at the solo. So let's start really quickly. We're in the key of C major to begin with. And it starts with this little... Now all that is is a 10th fret on the B string, then a pre-bend half step at the 12th fret on the B, and release it back down to the standard 12th fret. And you can pull off to the 10th fret after that, then pick 11, then 12, and 13. Now there's chords that go with that, so we have So that's the intro chords. You're going to see that again as he does whenever they do that melody in the song. These are the chords that go with it. It's an F major chord, which is the bar with your third finger across the, at the 10th fret across this, the uh, B, G, and D strings. And then the 8th fret here on the A string. Then basically reverse those. Do the bar here now with, on the the B, G, and D strings with your first finger and place your fifth finger at the tenth fret here on the A string. So it basically reverses those. Then we do this G major chord, which is your pinky at the tenth fret on the A string. We have a, the third finger at the ninth fret on the D, seventh fret on the G, and eighth fret on the B. then resolve it to this C major full bar chord you're probably familiar with. Full bar at the 8th fret, 10th fret on the A and the D string, and the 9th fret on the G string. Now that chord right there is the beginning of the verse chord progression which goes like this. Alright, so that starts with that C major, then it goes to a C major 7th chord, so that's just your first finger here um, at this 8th fret still on the 6th string, with the rest of your first finger mute all the other strings. That way you'll have the A string muted and this high E string muted, which you don't want in this chord. And then we have the 9th fret on the D string, 9th fret on the G, and then the 8th fret on the B. So when you strum that, you can see how that A is now muted. That fifth string is muted in there. And then we do back to the full bar here. Your third finger at the 10th fret on the A string, and then second finger at the 9th fret on the G string. And that's a C7 chord, C dominant 7. So we have... Now when you're doing this, there is this kind of phaser univibe effect going on, on the guitar. It might be a Leslie rotating speaker or whatever, but uh, whatever effect he's using, it's, he kind of brings out some of the notes by strumming them. And then picking out certain notes in a chord like this. Like on the D string there. So uh, that's kind of a random thing. So you can strum and kind of pick through some of the chords, uh, the strings randomly if you feel like you like that sound. And then we go to the F major chord after this, which we did earlier. Then you pick the, just a little bass line, eight on the A string, down to seven, and then do a D major chord, which is the same shape, but just down here at the fifth fret. Then we're gonna turn that D major chord into a D7 chord, a D dominant seven. You're gonna do that by just keeping a full bar here with your first finger, your third finger here at the seventh fret on the D, and then your pinky at the seventh fret on the B. Two beats for each one. All right, then we come down to this, which is really an A minor seven with a G in the bass. So it's really a third inversion A minor seven, but you're just gonna pick the G here, 
is really just done on uh, with a bass guitar on the recording. And then, now what is that? I'm doing the second finger here on the A, A at the, at the, on the uh, G string here, that's at the second fret. First fret on the B string, and third fret on the G, on the high E, on the G note. So we have, and what you want to do is you kind of pick the G and the B strings together. Then pick the high E string, and then pick the G followed by the B. And then pick the G and the B together again and slide it up two frets. We have... Alright, now we have this next chord form which is uh, pretty easy to see, to memorize. It's a bar chord across the 5th fret here, across the first three strings. And after you, every, you pick each one with a downstroke, Release the pressure in the left hand to kill the notes, giving it a staccato feel. So you do that four times on each chord here. And then basically you're just going to lower the note on the first string down one fret. So you've got to change the fingerings around here. One more fret down the top, the high E string. And then one more. So you can see the fingerings that I'm using to do that. Then this, the verse ends with the same lick that opens the song, which is the same chord. And that takes us back around to starting the second verse, which goes through the exact same chord sequence in the exact same order. And it ends the same way, except we're going to move to the key of A major here at the end. Of it. So that last melody, instead of going to the 13th fret, it goes to the 14th. And the chords that are going to work underneath that are the same except for the last one. This is at the very end of the verse. Instead of going to C, we take that same chord shape and move it down to the 5th fret. And we have A major. Alright? So, then we get to the bridge. And the bridge is going to sound like this. And that takes us into the solo. So the bridge is going to be an A major chord here, played kind of Hendrix style. You don't have to do the note on the, the thumb down on the sixth string, but you're going to borrow the first and second string at the fifth fret, sixth fret here on the G, seventh fret on the D. You're going to play those four strings twice in that kind of muted style, letting go of the pressure. Don't let go of the strings though. And then one more time after a pause. So the rhythm is this on each chord. One more time. Then we take it down to this C sharp minor chord, uh, fourth fret on the high E, fifth fret on the B, and then the sixth fret on the G and the D strings. Same rhythm there. Then down here to the bar at the second fret across the first through third strings with the fourth fret on the D string. And then down to a basic A major chord. Then to that D major shape here, the 5th fret on the uh, A string. Then to the G bar chord, it's the same as the bar chord we played earlier, just hit the 3rd fret. And then it's, you end the progression on this A, and then there's a bass line done basically on piano there. So what we're going to do is just do it on guitar, so it'll sound good if you're just playing as one, with one guitar. So we have, when you get to that A, just play... Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Pretty simple stuff. All right, then we start back over with the same chords. Now this time, instead of ending on A, we end on C, and then we do a bass line that just follows the uh, C major scale down the string. So it's C, B, a, G, F, E, which is eight, 
seven, five, three, one, zero. And then it goes back, the rhythm guitar goes back to the verse uh, chord progression. And um, what happens there is the actual solo. So we have the whole solo section where it works over the verse chords. Then at the end of the solo, we go back to the verse. And the verse happens the exact same way we just did earlier in the song. Um, and now we have, after that, we go into the outro. Now, the, basically, the outro is the first, the ending of this last verse here goes like this. Which is ending on the 14th fret there. So it's obviously in A. Then they do the melody again, and uh, but there's a little fill there before we do that. So we get the, the I'll just play the outro, just the melody notes first. All right, so let's just learn that real quick. We have this is after the last verse, getting to the outro here. This is familiar already. Ending on the 14th fret, go up and play the 14th again, and then 16, 15, 14 on the high E. This is right at the very end of the song, and then we go back to the melody again. This time you're going to slide from 11 to 12, and then you're going to grab the 11th on the G string and play that with the 12th fret on the B and slide those both up two frets. You can pick them or hybrid pick them. All right, and the chords that work under that are, since the first one ends in e, A major, you do the, you end that with an A major chord, and then you do the chords again, this time ending on C. All right, so it's basically only two sections to learn in the song, and then in the next lesson, we're going to take a look at the complete solo, which is really nice. I think it's probably the best solo in the whole Beatles catalog. It's really, every note in it is just perfect, so... Um, hope you look forward to that. All right, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.